Welcome back to Slothbox. I'm Lyndon Dixon, joined today by Shadeja Green. Shadeja, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I'm blessed. How are you? I'm not too bad. I mean, let's get straight into it. What a win at the weekend. I'm sure you're sore, but um, how does it feel to get that win? I felt amazing. Um, just to, uh, I mean, Aline Sideros, was a, she is a great fighter. I respected her then. I respected her before the fight, and I still respect her now. You know, I'm, I'm blessed that she stepped up and, you know, gave me the opportunity to showcase my skills against a formidable and a former world champion. And she showed uh, grade A skill in class Saturday night. You got the knockout in the sixth round. Just talk us through those final few moments of the fight. How did it feel? Um, I felt like I was uh, I was winning every round. Um, you know, I was taking it up levels round by round. And, um, you know, she was bringing it and she was bringing her fight. And I knew she wasn't going to stop coming forward. Um, I was a little cautious that she would after the knockdown, but she kept bringing it forward. And um, it just allowed me to set up some of my, my power shots. And uh, we got up out of there the sixth round, you know. <laughs> exactly. But in terms of the night itself, I mean, there were some great fighters on there, like Serrano, Baumgartner. How does it feel personally for you, like on your journey to fight on a card, like on a bill that big? Amazing. Um, everybody who knows me knows that I am a big Amanda Serrano fan. She's my, um, she's like a mentor. She's a legend in my eyes and an icon. So, for her to have me be a, a part of her her historic night, um, I was I felt so blessed and um honored, and I knew I needed to on a dominating and uh, professional performance to just thank her for giving me that opportunity. Um, also, Alicia Bumgarner, who was also a great fighter, very skilled, talented, and powerful mm -hmm. herself. Uh, Richardson Hitchison and John and Juan Bowser. It was just a number of fight fights that were um, dominating and, and, and really um, appealing fights. And we showed out in New York. We definitely mm -hmm. did. You mentioned um, Serrano, how she's a mentor, but an idol of yours as well. With you both being signed to the promotional company, I was just wondering, what's the relationship? What's the relationship like there? Do you get to talk much? Yeah, I mean, we talk. We talk a little bit on uh, social media. Um, she's been a supporter of mine. Her and her trainer Jordan have they've supported me, and they've actually probably more responsible than what people realize for me even being signed to MVP mm -hmm. because they've been mentioning my name and and um, giving me credit and giving me my just due when nobody else was. So I owe them a lot. You know, I owe them uh, a lot for for some of the success success that I've acquired thus far. And I'm honored to just be mentioned by um, two of the greatest people in the game, meaning Amanda Serrano and her short trainer, of course, Jordan, mm -hmm. who's uh, guided her career and um, has, is the reason for, you know, the success in the ring, in and out the ring that she has now. Hmm. You mentioned Serrano playing a part in signing to Jake Paul's MVP promotions. But um, I was just wondering, how did that come about? And now that it's done, like, how does it feel to be on Jake Paul's team? Um, I used to post a lot. I, st I, st I started posting a lot. My, my, my stablemate, my, my little brother, Rajon Chance, told me to basically use social media for promotion. And so I started pr promoting myself a bit more when I can because I, I don't really post a lot and I'm not on social media. And, um, you know, Jake Paul happened to just pay attention and uh, um, they had been watching me for a bit and they showed interest. And um, with what Jake Paul has done for women's boxing, who wouldn't want to be a part of that? You know, he's basically changed the game. He's brought more light to the to the sport. He, he's he's. He's brought more equity to the sport, and he's just been doing amazing things for women's boxing. He took his platform and fed uh, a sport that was hungry mm. and um, desperate for some shine. And Jake Paul is responsible for, along with Clarissa Shields and you know uh, Michaela Mayer and everybody else, Katie Teller. He, you know, Jake Paul put eyes on uh, the sport of women's boxing. It literally brings me perfectly on to my next point. Like, he's got a lot of critics, but at the same time, like all the stuff you just mentioned, the eyes he's brought to the sport, not just for the male side of boxing, but for the women's side as well. What do you say to those critics that say, like, people like Jake Paul aren't good for boxing? I say nothing. And I say continue to pay attention and to continue criticizing because what it does, it just, it, it, it just, uh, 
it ignites his flame and his fire because they're still watching. So mm-hmm. they have to be watching to be able to criticize him on any of his movements. And um, in this world, it's a it's a good versus bad, and it's the necessary evil. We need that. We need mm-hmm. those people that have an opinion. Everybody has an opinion, but we need those people who who um, go against certain things and certain avenues that are is creating profit for um, uh, the sport of boxing, the sport of women's boxing. That we, you know, we're getting the profit that we never got before. We've getting the limelight that we've never gotten before. And like I said, Jake Paul is one of the many influencers who uh, is, is bringing this type of attention to a sport that was in desperate need. Mm. But um, staying on yourself, um, it was a huge win on Saturday night on a great, on a massive stage. What's next now? Where do you, where are you planning on go from here for the rest of the year? Well, that win um, solidified my position to be mandated to fight for the, the undisputed title, um, especially to WBC and WBA. So, um, which at that point is the super middleweight French on crew. She's the undisputed world champion. So um, I believe she has a voluntary uh, defense in effect. And after that, the winner, I'll be expecting to um, negotiate and um, set a date to fight the winner mm. uh, or whoever has the, the belts at that point. Mm. When do you have any idea, like any time frame when you think that can come? And when it does come, how excited are you to be in a fight that big? Very excited. I'll be well prepared. Um, it's been something that I've been wanting for, for years now, and um, I'm finally here. The job is not done. Um, preparation is key. Uh, focus is key. And to, to, to get myself in the best physical shape that I can, and I want to be A-plus on that night so that I am victorious and become the new uh, WBC, WBA, WBO, IBF, uh, super middleweight, undisputed world champion. Um, moving on from yourself, your promoter Jake himself was fighting this month against Tommy Fury in a controversial, great build-up. Like it's just a, it's a huge fight in boxing, whether people like it or not. But um, there's a lot being spoken about for the loser in the fight. Like, where does the loser go? Is that it? Even Tommy Fury, like coming from a, a boxing family like that, people are saying that that's it if he loses. But for Jake, if he does lose against Tommy Fury, I mean. Is losing against a pro boxer. Is is that it for him if he loses? Well, I never envisioned Jake being um losing. I expect him to be fully um comfortable and victorious that night. Um there can never be an end for Jake because he has so many different avenues that he he takes and he's in control of. Um Jake is gonna lead by example, as he's as he always has. He's been victorious in his last fights, and I expect him to be extremely victorious this night. Um, I expect him to, if there are any critics that doubt that he can be victorious against Tommy Fury, I, I expect an upset. And um, we just don't manifest him losing. He works too hard. Um, he's talented, and he's growing every day. So, Exactly. But um, moving on from Jake, in the division, in the division below you, fellow American Clarissa Shields holds all the belts, and um, there's talks of who she's going to fight next. Maybe it's Tasha Jonas. Maybe it's someone else. Could we see you two in the ring together one day? Absolutely. Um, Clarissa Shields is considered the GOAT. She's one of the best female fighters I've ever seen. I would love to test my skills against someone who is considered one of the best. But that's what the sport is all about. Getting in the ring, testing your skills against who they say the best is. I believe she's one of the best female fighters. And that would be an honor. Um it has to make sense. It has to make a great deal of money. And I feel like we can really put on a great show. Mm. But um, providing you become the um, undisputed champion at your weight, if that happens, it sort of puts you right up there, puts you on that same pedestal. And mm-hmm. then you can start calling the shots. And I think that's going to be a hell of a position to be in. But even people like Savannah Marshall, she's looking for a fight. I think that would be a great fight for you two to be in the ring to go. Uh, of course it will be because it's two big pictures, you know. Exactly. Um, it that's a great fight in the future, but right now my full focus is on Franchon Cruz and Hannah Gabriels, who's supposed to expect to be fighting soon. So I could be fighting either one of them next. And I can't look past them. Um I can't look past the Franchon Crew, who's also a great fighter and brings it every night. So um Savannah Marshall, a potential fight in the future, it sounds great to me. Um that'll be a historic showdown. 
But like I said, um, my main focus is on the near future. Can't mm-hmm. overlook the person in front of me and mess around and never even get to the person that they're talking about next. Well, we spoke about earlier, Serrano on the top of the bill. She got that win again. And um, she met and faced, faced off with Katie Taylor in the ring afterwards. And it mm-hmm. looks like it set up a massive fight in April, I think, in Ireland. Is it going to be repeat for Katie Taylor or revenge for Serrano when those two meet again? I feel like it'll be a venge for Serrano. Of course, I, I had Serrano winning the first fight. Mm. Um, it was unfortunate that she didn't get the decision, but I think that she can make, if need be, any adjustments. And um, Amanda Serrano is just a phenomenal fighter. She brings it every time. She's willing to take two to get five. So um, we shall see. I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's, a, it's an exciting matchup again, and I'm sure it's going to break down barriers and break records just like it did the first time. The last question from me, it's been a pleasure speaking to you, but um, it's 2023, it's just the start of the year, you've already got a win, perfect. But where do you see yourself come the end of the year? What have you done and where do you envision yourself to be? 168 super middleweight world champion, on the pound for pound list, successful. Um, Maybe some magazines, some sponsors, some modeling gigs. I, love I, intend it. Well, be... <laughs> it I intend to be fully successful at, at the end of this year. Well, honestly, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. And, um, yeah, hopefully we can link up again in the future. I've been Absolutely. Little Dixon. She's been Shadesha Green. And we'll see you on the next one. I appreciate you. Thank you for providing your platform. And, you know, appreciate you. Have a great day. You too.